Over on Craft World, we have a fantastic downloadable Distress Ink and Oxide Color Swatch Chart. So I'm going to show you how to build your color swatch chart and how you can then use it later on. So a couple of things to make this easier for you once you've printed everything off is first of all, I've printed it onto a thicker paper or a thin cardstock just so it's a little more hard wearing. I've also found myself within my nesting dies a small rectangle die. Now if we look at the chart, this is going to fit beautifully inside those gaps there between each of the names of the inks. So this is going to help me with a little bit of acetate here, or you could do some plastic packaging to build a little window to ink into. And I'm going to cut this on my die cutting machine um, using a metal shim just to cut through the acetate nicely. So I'll go away and cut this and then we'll come back and start building up that color chart. So I've cut my acetate here. So I've got a very small rectangle cut into the middle of it now. So this is essentially a blending mat or a masking mat. And I have cut my printable template into the swatch line. So as you can see, I've got each of the strips here all ready cut up and ready to ink. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is go through, I've got a lot of oxides, um, but I've also got some inks as well. So where I don't have the oxide colors, I'm going to add in the ink colors. So I've got an idea because you can use oxides and inks together. Now this is a fantastic way, of course, of seeing which colors you have, which color areas you may be missing from as well. So maybe it's that you only have one red and there's actually quite a few there, or maybe you've got loads of blues, but you could really do with topping up your browns or your pinks so you'll be able to see clearly because this is quite roughly in color order as well so you'll be able to see your groups so let's get started with popping those uh, colors in at the moment these strips now have all of the colors in the distress ranges up to the brand new blue ribbon. Anything after that, we will be adding a new download. So you can download this. If there's a new color at the moment of watching after blue ribbon that's out, we'll have added that onto the end of this color chart. So you need only print off the last page and redo that one if you want to keep this up to date. So what I'm going to do is just place over there underneath salvage patina um, my little uh, square there with or my little window. Um, you can tape this down, of course, if you want to, but it, it won't take a lot. You can just hold it for a second. I'm going to take my salvage patina ink pad, ink that up nice and thickly, place this down. Now I've got a lot of acetate there, so I can really work that in and then lift that up and we've got our color down and you'll need to leave that to dry. So I wouldn't suggest working on each one side by side straight away because uh, you may smudge this one. Um, it's probably only for you to see yourself, but I'd recommend definitely drying this off. If it smudges, it probably doesn't matter too much, um, but I would give that a dry off there or just work on other strips while each one dries and come back to this one. So maybe do one color on each strip as you work through. I'm going to dry this one off very quickly and then move on to a higher one. Now for cleaning, so as you can see, we've got some ink on there. So I'm just going to bring in a mat and I'm going to have a piece of tissue to hand. So this tissue here will just wipe off that excess for me and I'll do this between each color. So now I've got a clean and brand new window here to use for the next one. So let's work next with the evergreen bow. So now I've added ink to all of my chart and I can see where the gaps are so I can see which ones I'm missing. Um, but I've also done one other thing and that's to write a little O or an I on each of the colors or both if it's relevant as to whether it's an ink or an oxide that I've got. So of course, once I get, for example, the faded jeans, once I get the oxide in that, I'll add a little O to that. So I know I've got both the oxide and the ink in that color. Um, I have used my cropper dial and I have just gone along and punched a hole through the top. Um, this did go through the top of all of these at once. And I've done the same on the front sheet as well. So now all that's left to do is to take a book ring or it could be a piece of string something like that if you want to 
and just thread all of these through. So starting at the back, I'm going to put these in order. And when you lay them down in color order, you'll start to be able to see um, which ones go to which. So for example, on the bottom of the blues there, the last one is milled lavender. So that then leads in to the purples. Um, the greens sort of lead into the blues here as well with those turquoise colors. So it's really quite simple to see. You've got a yellow there at the top of the green sheet. Um, the yellows then go into the oranges and those oranges into the reds. And lastly, the red with the barn door all the way up to the sponge sugar of the pink there. So then pop this on the top, close the book ring, and there, I can now hang that up somewhere and keep this so I've got my entire chart. So now if I want to color match or if I want to maybe work out a nice color combination, I can really easily do it by having a look at everything all at once, seeing the name, seeing what I've got in ink and which I've got in oxide and I can work out my projects much, much easier.